Selfless love does not require you to sacrifice your sense of safety, your sense of autonomy, your sense of self-love. If, if your partner is telling you that in order for you to fully love them, you need to sacrifice the things that you need to feel safe and valued and empowered and okay, uh, bad sign. Okay, hi, everybody. Ew, that was a weird intro. <laughs> Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for coming back if you've been here before or hi, welcome if you're new. My name is Mickey, I'm a therapist and we talk about therapy things on this channel. Today we are talking about Paul and Morgan again. Apparently they watch my videos or at least Paul does. Hi Paul. And so they released a video called Popular Sex Advice that we reject. I haven't watched all of this. I've scrubbed through a little bit of this and as uh, I'm, I'm sure it's a surprise to nobody. Uh, this is bad advice. <laughs> this is not evidence-based advice. Uh, this is like harmful and just like not the vibe. So we are here to talk about evidence-based information about sex and intimacy and self-love and the things. Before we get started, I want to give a clear caveat as we do on all of the fundamentalist videos that this content is not intended to be a criticism or a commentary about regular Christian people. I don't have beef with people who are religious or Christian. Do whatever you want or need or, you know, feel good doing. Uh, that's none of my business. I do, however, take big issue with people who are getting on the internet and trying to hide behind their religious beliefs um, as an excuse to perpetuate advice that's not evidence-based, that's harmful, that's shame-ing, and that isn't supported by the research in what we know about how to promote uh, mental health and wellness and like well-being for folks. So that's why we're talking about Paul and Morgan. Again, if you're a religious person, go off, live your best life. That's none of my beeswax. Um, but we are talking about Paul and Morgan and like we talk about Girl Defined and all the things for that reason specifically. Without further ado, let's just get into the video. Okay, here we go. I was kind of, as I was preparing for this video, looking back at some of our previous intimacy videos and uh, let's just say <laughs> sometimes our videos on this topic garner quite the reaction. Oh yes, we love giving content for our haters, you know, we love to make a good video that our, you know, sex therapist can make <laughs> and try and destroy. Um, it's a good time, so you know we, you guys are welcome. A good time. We say it's sex fun for therapist. Me. I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. Sex therapist. Well, there, there's other YouTube channels that. Also, just to be clear, the like therapist thing, y'all can check out the badge that's below this video. Um, YouTube has checked my credentials. I am in fact a real therapist, with not one but two college degrees thousands of hours worth of experience and a, a current active license in good standing with the state of Arizona. Um, I am very much a therapist, not a therapist. But also, Paul, so, hi, since you clearly watch these videos, um, I'm gonna try and cram all of the good and useful advice in the beginning. So maybe, you know, like humble yourself and like really absorb some, some good sex <laughs> advice. I'm gonna get kicked off the internet. This is a terrible idea. Let's keep watching. Okay, before we dive any deeper into that, I wanna give a shout out to this week's sponsor, Dipsy. Thank you so much for sponsoring this week's video. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short and sexy stories that are written by women for women. And my favorite thing about Dipsy is how inclusive they are. Dipsy has stories for straight and queer listeners. Um, and they also have stories that are voiced by people of color. So there really is something for everybody on the app. I have had a great time exploring the app because as we know, self-exploration and self-love is a wonderful and fabulous and beautiful part of being a human being. And for those of us who feel called to sexuality, it's important that we have content and media that feels safe and validating for us to explore that in. And Dipsy, is a really wonderful resource for that in my opinion. Dipsy also has new stories that are released every week so in between listening to your favorite stories you can sprinkle some new stuff here and there for variety and for newness and for fun. Dipsy doesn't just have fun sexy stories though they also have bedtime content which as a person who very much needs sound to fall asleep I really enjoyed. Um, the sleepovers and bedtime stories I have found most useful because they're fun sexy stories that I can just kind of fall asleep and doze off to um, without them being explicit. So I love that Dipsy incorporates a variety of different content that doesn't all feel one note. Obviously, I love Dipsy and I would love for you guys to experience the magic that is Dipsy. So for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash Mickey. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash Mickey. Dipsystories.com slash Mickey. Thank you so much to Dipsy for sponsoring this week's video. Make sure to go show Dipsy some love because they've showed me some love on this video. Um, and let's jump back into the video. Will react very <laughs> negatively to some of our context and um, contrary to popular popular belief, I've never actually watched any of them. <laughs> Good for you. Good <laughs> you for, on the other no, hand. I'm, I watched few and far between. Well, 
I, I don't typically watch the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come well, on. Come on. Anywho, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. We risk giving TMI. To help you navigate DMI, dating, marriage, and intimacy. Let's go. Um, what, what was... Oh, I was just about to say something. Uh. <laughs> Someone was not happy with me. I, I made a, a suggestion, and I said, guys, um, I would actually encourage you, if you're wanting to grow in a certain aspect of sex, I said, um, go to YouTube, type in what you're wanting to grow in, and learn about it. And so I saw a couple comments, but one person commented and said, I'm appalled you would recommend looking up sex acts on YouTube. You're essentially advising to view P-O-R-N, and then they go on. And I just wanted to respond, you guys know where Morgan and I stand. Any of you who watch us regularly know. But I responded to this person and said, you're not correctly interpreting what I said. I'm saying I think there can be benefits in watching a video where a man or woman explains how to do a certain thing. Not... I would just like to point out that the whole reason that this is a problem is because Paul, people like Paul and Morgan and this culture generally uphold this belief that talking about sex, uh, having frank and open conversations about sex, um, and destigmatizing sex is like a problem. Just because Paul and Morgan have taken the tack of being like the spicy Christian people doesn't mean that they're not contributing to this problem. They are still very much perpetuating this culture that far and away, first of all, disadvantages people with vulvas, but second of all, teaches people terrible fucking things about <laughs> sex, poorly equips people to have healthy and adequate sex lives, and really just like generally incentivizes people to promote misinformation, disinformation, and to be like just wholly ill-equipped in this regard. And so, this is the reason that we make the content that we make because Paul and Morgan like to flatter themselves as being like, we're the sex Christians. But the reality is that they're still perpetuating this advice from a culture that is inherently sex negative. And so it doesn't matter how many videos you make about your particular sex life, Paul and Morgan, you're still contributing to the overall stigma of this issue. First popular sex advice that we reject. Yes. I'm gonna kick things off. I reject that and I, I saw People advising this, you even brought this one up. Self-discovery, we'll just call it self-discovery, pleasing yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, the popular advice is we should become experts at pleasing ourselves yes. by practicing on ourselves, learning yes. how we operate, what feels good by ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that we can be better lovers and know what we like to tell our partners. Yes, and we reject that. Reject. We were, and here's where we reject it. And I told Morgan before this, I said, I think self-discovery, what feels good, how our bodies operate and work is a good thing when done with your spouse. Right. Bring them That's into the self-discovery process. Pause. That's not self-discovery then. Don't get me wrong. Mutual masturbation is very much um, a thing that exists and it can be very beneficial. It can be really positive and, and helpful um, in relationships. But um, mutual masturbation is not the same thing as self-discovery or like solo masturbation. This is just like, again, what I'm talking about where Paul and Morgan have sort of branded themselves as like, we're not sex therapists, but like we talk about sex a lot, people. And this is not the same. It's not helpful advice. When we do this, where we just say like, we think essentially masturbation is wrong, um, but if you do it with your partner, it's okay. Like it's the same. <laughs> thing. It's the same stigma that you guys are lumping onto this issue. You can't just say that you can do self-discovery with a partner because the reality is that then it's not self-discovery. It's not solo time. Um, I think this is also worth discussing because um, when we talk about exploring one's own body, learning what feels good to you, learning what's pleasing to you, it's important for that to exist in like a private context for some folks, um, especially folks who have a vulva, are femme, um, were assigned female at birth, like that umbrella, um, because so much of the cultural attitude about sex is that those folks are to be consumed by folks with penises. The act of sex should be inherently performative and to be like viewed as sexy by the male partner. We're just gonna use binary terms to like shorten this conversation, bear with me. Sex doesn't exist in a binary, people don't exist in a fucking binary, but for the sake of a succinct explanation. The problem with this is that when we try to do self-discovery with a male partner in the room, a lot of folks will default to this attitude that I'm supposed to look sexy right now, I'm supposed to put on a show for my partner, and I'm supposed to be doing things that are 
um, primarily uh, a turn on to view. This clouds our ability to like actually explore what feels good for us. The reality is that masturbation and like self-discovery, self-pleasure doesn't always look sexy. And for what it's worth, sex is not always going to look sexy. This idea um, that the act of sex should be inherently like beautiful to view is just simply not true. Real and normal <laughs> sex is filled with like fart noises and squelches and sweat and like laughter and like a, oh, oh, could you do, oh, uh, sorry. Like it's, it's very normal for that to be the case. Um, but we have a hard time internalizing this or really believing this when we grow up in this culture that teaches us that sex is supposed to be something that's supposed to be viewed rather than experienced. We've talked about this in our own intimacy and advice video, which I will link up here. Um, but Paul giving this, or Paul and Morgan giving this advice um, that you can do self-discovery, just do it with a partner is not the same. Like that's not helpful um, and it doesn't serve the same purpose. It's not to say that you can't explore yourself with a partner, but I think it is short-sighted, um, inappropriate, and just like generally fucking bad advice to say <laughs> that exploring your own body on your own time is a bad thing and you shouldn't do it. We know that this is a valuable and useful thing and I think there is also a conversation to be had about how self-exploration and self-pleasure and masturbation um, isn't only a vehicle to make you a better lover to someone else or to make you more able to communicate what you like. It's just a perfectly valid and shame-free um, and perfectly average thing to be doing. It's very, very common for folks to find and enjoy masturbation as like part of a normal self-care routine and it doesn't have to serve the purpose of making you a better wife or partner or whatever. Um, it's okay to just masturbate on your own time um, as an act of self-love. I think we should really destigmatize that and normalize that. So the topic of self-pleasure is a bigger topic. Maybe we'll go into it more, just like our thoughts on that. But we're mainly talking right here about just this idea that, oh, you need to be doing all this stuff to yourself. Listen, bring your spouse into it. Wow. Learn. I like being touched this way. Mm -hmm. When you do this, it turns me on. I think there's also another conversation to be had here about ego because especially like this is a very common phenomenon in heterosexual relationships where both partners are with an AFAB partner and an AMAB partner. It's very, very common, first of all, for there to be an orgasm gap. That is a whole separate issue. I'll link to a video up here that explains that. But uh, there's just like an ego issue here. It's very, very common for AFAB folks or fem folks, people affected by misogyny, um, to experience a lot of guilt and discomfort and fear around communicating to a male partner or a partner with a penis, I guess, male partner, usually it's cis male partners, that they are doing it wrong or that they don't get it uh, because historically uh, they're not portrayed or like a lot of folks have negative experiences in this regard. And so it can actually feel very scary and vulnerable, especially in the moment to say, I don't like that or you're doing it wrong. And so it's very, very common, especially I can promise you as the person who holds people's secrets, like I'm sure other therapists can vouch for this. It's very, very common to hear this feedback from folks that like, well, you know, didn't really like uh, do it for me, but like I felt guilty. And so I just didn't say anything. And like, it is what it is. This is harmful. This is why <laughs> masturbation and self-exploration and also like frank and open and honest conversations with your partner are important. Um, but I think to say that you can just experience the same amount of growth and self-exploration with a partner that you can on your own is like simply not true and also short-sighted. And again, the thing where we're trying to shoehorn um, what actually is good advice um, in that you should explore your own body and learn how to please yourself if sex is something that matters to you and just shoehorn it into the Christian perspective and saying like, yeah, yeah, do that, but with a partner. Like that's not the same. You can't just assign your belief system and like make it work for you. It doesn't work that way. That I reject is P-O-R-N will help you be a better lover. Mm. Um, this is fair, honestly. I've heard this before. And I think it's just, like, so insane. Like, first of all, there's a, a ton of research out there that proves that P-O-R-N is incredibly damaging to your brain, to your sexual desire. Comparison comparison it can cause literal erectile dysfunction okay <laughs> so i mean there's legit research out there showing that that's not true at all yeah. um okay 
So this is a contentious issue. I want to encourage everyone to proceed <laughs> with an attitude of kindness and respect and compassion for one another in the comments because people have really strong feelings about this. Don't fucking abuse each other in the comment section, please. Be mad at me. Don't be mad at each other. Be nice to each other. This, again, is a very contentious issue. I would not be surprised at all if the research that Morgan is referencing comes from a like Christian pro-marriage institution. There are a lot of organizations um, that are overtly Christian, that are aggressive conservative that peddle this research about how this type of material has all kinds of negative it permanently damages your brain like all of this stuff I've seen this um, and again I want to encourage folks to be conscientious consumers in, in regards to research and information because not all research is created the same um, and the institution which uh, is dispersing the information is just as important as what the actual research says itself. Bias is very much a thing that clouds research. Um, just because something is a statistic does not mean that it is inherently true. And we, as like a culture or a society, a country, have a really hard time with digital media literacy. And so again, just grain of salt there as always. But on top of that, I think it's fair to say that most people, especially people who are sex therapists, sexologists, um, sex positive folks, aren't big fans of this like conventional industry. Um, I do want to be careful because this, this word in particular gets your channel <laughs> like red or uh, blacklisted. Rarely, if ever, do I see actual evidence-based sex therapists, sexologists, like people who are educated in this field recommending the use of this type of content to improve one's sex life. Um, I think it's fair to say that there are vehicles of this that can be positive, empowering, uplifting, valuable, and that it's not all created equal. Um, when we think about this industry, typically what comes to mind for people are the very gratuitous male gaze centered video like media types of stuff that generally is like wrought with its own issues in terms of like workplace conditions in terms of how it's like produced whether it's done ethically or not um, but there are very much ethical and safe and empowering and positive ways to consume this type of content and I am so eternally frustrated by folks who, especially from like this conservative religious view, um, don't like talking about sex generally, um, lump all of it together because the reality is that there is a way to consume content that is arousing, that is erotic. Um, again, that's like safe, ethically produced, um, that's empowering, that promotes an attitude of sexual wellness and sexual well being, and is also evidence based. Like people can create content from like in that realm that's based in evidence based practice and is like a safe thing to do. Um, and so I just am very frustrated by Paul and Morgan again, like lumping all of this into the same boat because it's not all the same. I saw um, some article advising that, but they were saying beyond just the PORN, just watch a steamy show or steamy mm. movie together to kind of get your mind in that right. world, to get in the mood, uh, show you what you can do. And it's kind of like, no. And they even like listed shows. Bridgerton was one, which I've not seen Bridgerton. <laughs> I've heard that it's very explicit. Yeah. And so... Guys, don't start justifying it. Oh, we're a Christian. We're not going to watch PORN, but we are going to watch all these explicit, steamy. Mm. No, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. No sex. Make your own Bridgerton. No sexy content Whatever. ever. What did you just say? Make your own Bridgerton. Make your own Bridgerton. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Hey, they just say that TMI for DMI, thing? baby. <laughs> TMI for DMI. Um, all right. My next one I reject. Now we're going to. Just really quick, also for what it's worth, the other problem that I take with this advice is that it's speaking prescriptively about whether, what other people should and should not do. Um, I want to highlight again that Paul and Morgan are just woefully ill-equipped to be providing advice. They've openly admitted that their own goddamn videos that they made are not... Uh, like, like didn't age well. They've openly admitted that the, the videos they used to make about sex and intimacy didn't really stand the test of time. And like big fucking red flag. This is what happens when we speak prescriptively about the lives of others based on our own lived experience. You're not equipped to do that. You just simply don't have the skills or the tools to be doing that safely. So like, first of all, don't. Um, but second of all, when we're consumers of information, I want to encourage folks to be mindful of this because people like Paul and Morgan have a vested interest in trying to recruit you to their religious beliefs. It's their opinion that if you're not of their very specific brand of Christianity that you will burn an eternal hellfire or something and it's their moral <laughs> obligation um to save you and so like this creates an inherent issue when we talk about whether they're trustworthy people to take advice from or not uh the reality is that taking advice especially about something that as 
is as contentious as sex and intimacy should be done from somebody who is like licensed or like at the very least educated in some formal way and is speaking from broad strokes research education facts something that isn't just we got married and think that our sex life is great and i just want to say before i do my next one guys some of these genuinely we're just giving our perspective you can take them or leave them yeah Seriously, you don't have to agree with everything. Comment and let us know your thoughts if maybe you disagree with one or the other. But um, here's one that I reject. I reject, and this is a Christian one, the idea among some Christians that sex shouldn't be wild and adventurous. It should stay minimal. There is, as Exo Marriage put it, Exo Marriage YouTube channel, there's a gate around the yard. And we need to know, according to the Bible, what that gate is, what God wants to protect keep within the marriage bed and what should not be allowed in the marriage bed but then the yard inside that gate is very big okay two things first of all it frustrates me to no end when paul and morgan say this about like listen this is just our perspective man like that's just our opinion man like you don't have to take our advice like why are you making this content then but also <laughs> It's like so obviously not true because we, we talked about, I will link the video up here where they did this. They said, we're just sharing what works for us. We aren't telling anyone you have to do this. And then literally 30 seconds later, follow it up by saying, well, if you're not having sex as often as we are, we think you're being lackadaisical about your sex life and that you're not having sex enough. Like make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. This is what I'm saying when I talk about being a conscientious consumer because people can say whatever they want on the internet, but that doesn't make it true, first of all. Um, and it also doesn't mean that that's their genuine intention. I think Paul and Morgan do very much like to position themselves as experts and speak prescriptively about the lives of others. They've actively gotten on their channel and said, if your husband is doing this, he's being sinful. You need to involve a, a counselor. You need to involve a priest. You need to involve other people and you need to hold him accountable for his sin. They literally said, you need to, to a stranger on the internet who they had no information about their life other than the very short snippet that they wrote in on Instagram. And so Paul and Morgan can say this, but that doesn't make it true. And I think they like to just issue this caveat to try and get out of being held accountable for the fact that they're perpetuating very harmful, very factually incorrect information without having to take accountability for it. And this is what I mean. This is why I make the content that I do. Because when you try to speak prescriptively about people's lives with no facts, no evidence, no like basis to back up the shit that's coming out of your mouth, you are going to be held accountable on the internet. Like this is the thing. You you may have freedom of speech to say whatever you want, but you are not free from the consequences of saying those things. And just because it makes someone uncomfortable doesn't mean that you can give some throwaway caveat about like, that's just my opinion. This is just my experience. Like, no. They're very obviously and actively, and they continue to speak prescriptively about what others should and should not be doing. Um, and they just throw out this caveat every now and again to try to get out of accountability, and it's not going to work. You guys might be like, what? No one actually thinks that. Christians don't think that. No, go read some of the comments on some of our videos. Like, literally, there are people who are like, you should not be having a good time having sex. Okay, well. okay, but where do you think they get that idea from, Morgan? Where do you think they get that idea from? Maybe like, I don't know, the very oppressive religious institution to which y'all belong and are a part of? I. This is the other thing that is inherently frustrating to me about this content is that just because we are branding ourselves as like cool and hip and young and we talk about sex being fun and like ooh TMI doesn't mean that the content isn't still coming from this repressive place um, and that it doesn't belong to this overall culture that far and away uh, treats sex as a shameful and disgusting thing. Girl Defined have also started to do this too. They realized that, first of all, their engagement, I think, was dropping. But second of all, that their content was not aging well because they were aligning themselves with purity culture and all these really harmful beliefs that generally, I think, like, as a, a generation, Gen Z and millennials are very much turning their backs on because it's harmful and fucking traumatizing. And so they've tried to pivot their messaging to be more palatable, to be more, like, progressive. They would die if they <laughs> heard someone say that. Um, but, like, they really are trying to make their content more palatable and more progressive to try and, like, stand the test of time. But I, again, am not going <laughs> to, like abide by that just because it's slightly more sex positive doesn't mean that it's not still coming from a very harmful place read the songs of solomon baby sex <laughs> is pleasurable that's part that's one very good aspect of it it's yes. pleasurable come on like we've heard the whole try before you buy stuff blah 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 um but 
yeah, just, like, it doesn't matter how many people you sleep with. Like, whenever you yes. get married, it's not going to affect anything. Correct. And I think that you could probably talk to a lot of people who had, like whether who? it was just one partner outside of their spouse or multiple partners outside of their spouse. Like, there were things that they've had to work like through. What? Now, you know, don't get me wrong. Like, God is a redeeming God. And, you know, for us, I had slept with someone besides Paul before getting married. And, like, he redeemed that completely. And really, it was not even something that we had to work through. Like, God was just, just really blessed that area. But... I do I don't think that's like super common from the conversations that I've had with other women out there and like just who? like talking about the struggles that they've had whether they were the one who had a partner before or multiple partners or their husband did like it's it can cause a lot of damage in marriage source. if you are just can sleeping around source? and then you get married and you just think that that's not going to affect anything This is what I'm fucking talking about. It does not matter if you try to dress up your sex advice as being sex positive and fun because these people will turn around and shame you into oblivion for having had sex before you got married despite the fact that Morgan literally did this. But it's fine. Rules for thee but not for me, right? Totally cool. I was God's favorite and God blessed and didn't have any issues with it. But don't worry, everybody else probably will. And I definitely, on good authority, have it from a friend, not me, but a friend, that this was harmful. Like, this is, again, I'm just so frustrated by this because, one, where are the sources? Where are the facts? Can I have some scraps, please? Anything? Nothing. There's not even like a vice write up in the description. <laughs> like, nothing really. We couldn't dig up from any corner of the internet any amount of media to support this. Like, it just, it's disappointing. It's, it's a little funny, but it's mostly disappointing because this advice of like, you, if you have sex before you get married, it will damage your marriage and it will make your sex life bad. Says who? Show me some research, provide me with some facts or evidence or some broad strokes pattern that's demonstrated across a period of time, across different demographic features, and that's reliably reproduced in the research because then I will take you seriously. But until you do that, it this has the same energy as like, well, my friends, cousins, roommates, sisters, brother said, and like, that's not useful advice for anyone. But also this is not a safe basis for which to be prescriptively speaking about what is safe or not safe, especially to young and impressive impressionable people who are forming their sense of identity and their like sexual identity for the first times in their lives, this is not a safe or okay thing to be perpetuating on the internet because the reality is that first of all, the human experience is complex and varied and some people may have sexual trauma, baggage, negative sexual experiences in having partners before they get married and some people may not. A lot of the negative experiences or trauma or baggage that someone might carry into a relationship with marriage is not from having had happy, healthy, safe sexual experiences experiences and just being outside of God's design, a lot of times that sexual trauma comes from having partners who are abusive, who are a bad fit, who are unsafe, having sexual experiences before we're ready to, feeling pressured, like a whole host of different reasons. Um, But those, I want to be super clear, those issues are not exclusive to having had sex outside of the institution of marriage. That's not a real thing. We have no reliable research to demonstrate that having sex without a fancy piece of paper means that the sex will be bad and will damage you later in life. That's not a real phenomenon. It's entirely possible for experience for people to experience harm from sexual activity, um, but it has nothing to do with your marital status. It has everything to do with the type of partner that you have, the type of community that you have, the type of conversations that we have, the type of communication that we feel safe to have, our sense of safety, our sense of self, our ability to effectively advocate for ourselves. And these are all things that Paul and Morgan belong to a community that's famous for taking away from people, especially femme people and AFAB people. And so this advice is just... It's like flabbergasting to me that we're still doing this. Personally, I've grown so much as a lover to Morgan through the aid of outside help and resources, but please use discretion when choosing those resources. Genuinely, because it it can not be good, but I would push and say it can be very good. It can, in fact, totally transform a married couple's love life. Like what? And not even in like a selfish thing. Like it's allowing me to become genuinely someone who can love my wife better. And the last thing I'll say, Morgan, I want you to chime in. Um, 
some couples, perhaps they have a past that is not great and maybe they got saved and so forth, they may have to be ex- extra careful in the research they do. And, and I bless that. You know, I'm not trying to get on here and say everyone should be doing all of this research. Here's what that should look like. If you have a past or if you just have these really strong convictions to be very careful, do that. I bless that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't think that should be the rule for the majority, personally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I don't know what point he's trying to make here. Um, I do think that this illustrates part of the issue with the advice that Paul and Morgan give, which is that um, it's not shameful to talk about sex. It's okay for you to talk about sex as long as you're married, as long as you're talking about sex within marriage. Um, and also it's okay for people to do research, to want to be better at sex, to, um, use a variety of different resources to improve your ability to be a good sexual partner. Um, but not certain ones. Use your discretion. Be careful. Cause some of them are sinful. Some of them are bad. Some of them are dangerous. And like, first of all, this attitude of spreading fear and insinuating that there are are resources for sex that like will ruin your life and like the boogeyman is just lurking around every corner is part of the christian handbook of purity culture um in perpetuating the idea that sex is an inherently disgusting and shameful thing you have to be careful about who you learn about it from because you could distort god's image and make it a disgusting and sinful and terrible thing but also this is so confusing like can you imagine being a 15 year old and watching this content for the first time and being like what? Like, (laughs) how do I know? How do I know if it's bad? How do I know if it's good? How do I know if it's safe? Like, where is the line? And they do such a terrible job (laughs) of illustrating a clear line in the sand. I think probably because there isn't one. Um, And also because Paul and Morgan have a history of saying like, well, I did it. And so therefore it's fine. But this is also part of the issue with stigmatizing and shaming a very normal and common part of human life, which is that there is to Paul and Morgan a line at which you cross over from it being beautiful and godly to it being like disgusting and shameful but that line is like increasingly difficult to identify and like subject to change at any time and it's not surprising to me then that when we look at the research we see increased levels of anxiety and scrupulosity and and OCD diagnoses within cultures like this because it breeds this attitude of like hyper hyper vigilance and like excessively analyzing things and like constantly being sucked into this feeling of fear and anxiety and overwhelm about like am I doing the wrong thing is this a bad thing is this going to like eternally damn me forever if I click on this link this is just not a healthier safe way to live your life. I really want to encourage people, especially if you are a person who's deconstructing from religion, to give yourself the peace and the freedom to divest from this culture that teaches you that you have to be hyper aware of every choice that you're making, every thought that you're thinking, every impulse that you have, every feeling that you have. Otherwise, you might be on the doorstep of eternal damnation. That's just simply not a healthier, safe way to live your life. Everyone should have someone that they can talk to about sex. And And obviously, you're not going to share all the details with this person, like every single thing. But to be able to ask questions and talk and get advice from, I think, is very wise. So good. And I would ask the people that are like, no, none of that, none of that. Do you purpose, do do you avoid the Songs of Solomon? And maybe they do. And again, if that's your conviction, I can't, I don't even want to read the Songs of Solomon and picture this guy named Solomon doing any intimate acts. It's just my husband and me, or just my wife and me. Okay. But again, let's not put that on everyone else. Mm -hmm. Hello? Are you fucking joking me? (laughs) What on planet fucking earth is going on? The, the amount of mental gymnastics is truly staggering. Um, it's honestly kind of impressive. I'm sure that Paul is really good at yoga because he just be reaching, man. I, uh, <laughs> wow. Um, okay, this, this is the other thing that is worth discussing. We've talked about this before, but in this culture that stigmatizes sex and intimacy and is like deeply invested in purity culture as a phenomenon, develop this attitude that sex is shameful, sex is bad, um, and that we shouldn't talk about it. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that Paul and Morgan are doing the same thing that these people who they're saying that they reject their advice, y'all are doing the same thing. It's just like different 
it's, it's placed at different areas on the spectrum, but both of you have reductionist, regressive, stigmatizing, harmful and shameful beliefs about sex. One of you is just more comfortable with talking about your own personal sex acts on the internet, and that doesn't make it inherently safer or better advice. This still belongs to the same culture that teaches the same harmful and shitty fucking beliefs, and it's just like a different flavor of it, but that doesn't make it good or safe. Potential TMI for your DMI. <laughs> Potential. <laughs> Help out those algorithms. We appreciate it. But no, I think this is a good one. This has stirred a lot of controversy up in the YouTube whizzy world. The whizzo. Whizzo. Um, and I'm not like totally sure why other than the people who are really mad about it are not necessarily believers. I think that there's a lot of people who have come over on our sex advice videos who are not believers and yeah. they've just lambasted. So, to, me mainly. To those people well, who are going to hear this and not like it, if you're not a believer, what's up? Welcome to the channel. Good to see you guys. Um, but we understand that you wouldn't get this because it's a biblical concept. And oh boy. if you're not in the Word of God, you're not going to get it. So, anywho, all right, this Bring one is. Out. We reject the piece of advice of you don't owe your spouse anything when it comes to sex Ugh. so if you don't want to have sex you don't have to have sex correct and your husband can deal with that or yes. your wife can get over it but i have okay. a feeling most of y'all are saying your husband can get over it it's mostly aimed at the husband <laughs> yeah no yes. doubt about it so i think that that's Ridiculous. <laughs> Morgan, real quick, Why? I went back and I watched What's the, the video. Basis? Uh I think I'll just I'll just be honest. If you guys want to go back to it, it was uh what we wish we knew about sex uh -huh. from about a month and a half yeah. ago. Yeah. It I mean the comments on that video are just just brutal. <laughs> but here was a very common comment that is they've all moved to the top of the video. <laughs> You do not owe anyone sex, no matter what. Yes. Even if you're married, you don't owe your partner sex. Correct. You are also not entitled to sex from your partner. Correct. Sex is not a mandatory part of a relationship yes. at all. That's one of the nicer comments. Wow, what it's for like sure. what my so, saying. you know, this like really makes the worldly people, the heathens, <laughs> I'm just going to use that word. I'm whoa, sorry. Whoa. Mad. Just a quick shout out. If you want to be a heathen like me, I don't have my shirt on, but I did earlier. <laughs> we have a uh, really fun heathen sinful merch if you want to go buy it. Because they don't understand what selfless love is. It's not about not. God. A, uh, it's not about pushing against someone's con consent. It's about being selfless from time to time. If you are keeping sex from your husband for weeks on end, even days, like days and days and days, whatever, Boy, or months or years, that's incredibly selfish and that's not a marriage. Like, I don't know what you're doing to do that to your spouse. I'm husband, gonna, too. Like, I'm going to explode. We're just giving our perspective. You can take them or leave them. Yeah. Seriously. That's incredibly selfish. And that's not a marriage. Like, I don't know what you're doing. It's not a marriage. Ooh, fucking yikes, y'all. I just, let's start from the top. First and foremost, no one is entitled to sex from anyone ever, but especially from your partner. This idea that being married, being in a relationship, being tied together in some meaningful way means that you are entitled to sex with your partner is so incredibly fucking harmful, especially when we talk about feminine fab people who are affected by misogyny, because this is a cultural value, as much as Paul and Morgan like to say that we're not of the world, that this is a very strong cultural value that we've absorbed, that people with vulvas are just destined to be consumed sexually by like, especially cishet men. This is super fucking harmful and also dehumanizing. This is not helpful and this is not a healthy attitude to carry into your relationship. I strongly want to encourage anyone to take a deep and insightful look at your relationship if this is an attitude that exists here. Um, I don't want to speak prescriptively about Paul and Morgan because I don't know them and I, I don't want to comment on their marriage. It's, it's useless to do so and also I think you're responsible. But for those of you who, especially if you're experiencing a feeling of obligation, Obligation and that's becoming a barrier to you safely and consensually enjoying sex um, or intimacy, this is like really worth examining. And the thing that is so frustrating 
to me is that Paul and Morgan will say, we don't belong to this culture or like we don't believe in these things that like sex shouldn't be enjoyable and blah, blah, blah. Like we're the sex questions, right? Um, except that then you go and say these things that are so, so, so fucking harmful. And it's because you are a byproduct of this culture that teaches people that sex is an entitlement. It's a thing. Um, and it's a form of payment. It's, it's viewed as a transaction in this culture, which is super fucking abusive. <laughs> This is not a healthy or safe thing to be teaching people because the reality is that if we are a person who is called to sex, which to be clear, not all people need to have sex, want to have sex, experience value from sex, or feel safe to have sex, even if you are a person who wants to have sex, not all people are in a place currently where they feel safe to do so. And so therefore requiring sex as a part of a real marriage or a real relationship is so fucking mean. And also just blatantly fucking false, by the way. But also, even if you are a person person who does experience sexual desire and wants to have sex, you are not entitled or obligated to have sex with your partner anytime that they deem it necessary. I think it's also really, really telling that Paul and Morgan talk about withholding sex from your husband for days on end or weeks on end as if it's an act of abuse. The reality is that people can go their entire good goddamn lives without being inside of anyone else and not experience any negative consequences from that. Sex is not a, a thing that we need to live. Sex is not a mandatory part of our lives. Sex is not a thing that anyone will simply expire if they don't have it. People do and will and continue to go to the grave without ever experiencing sex or intimacy. And this is perfectly fine. It's not a mandatory part of the human experience. And also, this is so fucking weird to perpetuate this attitude that someone is entitled to sex with you simply because you signed a contractual legal document. Nowhere in the actual legal entanglement of marriage does it say now that you are married you're entitled to share your genitals with one another that's not real the other problem with this is that paul and morgan say well we're not saying you should have sex all day every day or every time your spouse wants to but you should be selfless in in having sex with your partner maybe when you don't want to and they do the reason that this is so fucking harmful is that it first of all communicates this attitude that not only is sex an entitlement and a thing that needs to be happening for a real relationship but also that even if you're not feeling safe feeling feeling a desire, feeling like you um, are okay to have sex, that you uh, should do it anyways, because it doesn't matter really that you're not enjoying it. And the reason th this, this just like rolls downhill into uh, abuse, into assault, into rape culture so, so, so quickly, this attitude that you, um, if you're not just having sex with your partner or, or saying yes to sex um, that you don't actually want to have if you're, if you're not doing that, that you're abusing your spouse or hurting them is abusive. Like this is rape culture at its, at its core, at its essence. I, I also want to talk about like the selfless love thing. Like <laughs> heathens don't know selfless love. This is like such a Christian take <laughs> because first of all, how would you know, Morgan, uh, you've like self-identified as having never been in a relationship with someone who's not a Christian. And so this is woefully out of your depth. But second of all, this is again, the thing where we prescribe Christianity as the solution to the problems that Christianity has created. The truth of the matter is that people from all different walks of life, religious or not, spiritual or not, all across cultures and races and beliefs and value systems can and do experience selfless love. This is a weird take, um, but also simply not true. I just, I'm like overwhelmed by how bad this advice is. I feel like I need a minute to like collect my thoughts almost. Okay, let's keep going. Husbands, if you're keeping sex from your wife, you are sinning, okay? We're just giving our perspective. You can take them or leave them. Yeah. Seriously. It, you are going against the entire, like, image of what God has designed marriage to be. We're just giving our perspective. You can take them or leave them. We would, we would agree that sex, I'm sorry, that marriage is so much more than sex. Definitely. And there is... Um, going to be unique circumstances within marriage where it may, you know, there's unique circumstances, mm -hmm. but the gen in, in general, mm -hmm. th that should not be the norm, guys. Why? That should not be the norm. Says who? Um, there's a Bible verse just kind of in keeping no, with this. we're not listening to that. Um, <laughs> this is what I was talking about earlier that they will say like, oh, well, there's specific circumstances that it's okay or like special things that make it okay for you to like withhold sex. But like that, 
This is the problem with this fucking advice is that like, first of all, that line is increasingly difficult to suss out. But second of all, you're openly admitting that there are circumstances in which people will not have sex in marriage, but then also saying, if you're not having sex, it's not a real marriage. Which fucking one is it? Because the thing that frustrates me about this belief system is that if you're going to be repressive and hateful and shameful and stigmatizing, just do it with your full chest. Like, just be honest. Just say, we are committed to dehumanizing people that don't believe in our very specific brand of, of Christianity and so therefore if you're not one of us we hate you just say that like it's shorter honestly it would make this content a lot easier for me to make and my editor's job a lot fucking easier I just am so tired of the the gymnastics and like the the walking around of the hateful beliefs because it's clear that Paul and Morgan are committed to espousing this advice that's not only harmful and shaming and like very much dangerous, but also that they wanna to try to skirt around the issue of accountability. They want to say and believe really hateful and hurtful things that far and away have the ability to damage people and disadvantage them in terms of developing healthy and happy relationships and they just don't wanna be held accountable for it and I don't have any patience for that, I really don't. At least just lead with your full chest and be honest about what it is that you believe which is that you will dehumanize anyone who is not exactly a Christian like you are. My namesake, the Apostle Paul. <laughs> Morgan, would you like to read that? Yes. 1 Corinthians 7, 3-5 says, The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife, and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. Do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. And this goes. This is the thing. <laughs> Again, this is why I say that if you are a Christian person um, and you choose to believe these things, that's none of my business. Like you can do that. And if that's the, the code by which you choose to live your life, that's fine. But the problem is that Paul and Morgan are getting on the internet and saying to hundreds of thousands of people, these are the things that you should believe and that are true. This is the truth, capital T truth, um, about being a human being. And if you're not a believer, you might not get it. You're not one of us, so you don't get it. But it is still the truth. And we know that that's not fucking real. I'm not interested in debating whether Christianity is real. But what I mean is that statistically, factually, in the research, we can demonstrate that having sex or being coerced into sex when you're not providing consent for it is damaging. This is unsafe, this is harmful, this is traumatizing, this hurts people, this harms their mental health, this harms their ability to be sexual in future relationships, this harms their ability to feel safe in their own body and in the world. This creates a whole host of negative outcomes for people, again, across demographic features, across time, throughout different cultures. These are things that are harmful. This is so clearly demonstrated in the research, and so I don't give a fuck what Paul and Morgan's holy text says, because again, if you choose to believe this, and this is the, the belief system by which you're choosing to live your life, that's your choice. Those are your choices for your own body and I'm not here to try and regulate what other people do with their bodies but to say that other people should also live by the standards that you have found to be safe and pleasing in your own life is not safe or or okay <laughs> at all um I just this is why I want to encourage folks to defer to like fact and evidence-based information because again like the harm the potential for harm here is off the fucking charts um, and saying that you don't have authority or autonomy over your own body because you're married and if you're a Christian that you should believe this is so fucking dangerous. I just, yeah, you get it. He's just not that into it. It's not something maybe PORN was part of his mm -hmm. life before oh, marriage and now it's just not quite doing it for him. Mm -hmm. He's really busy with work. Mm -hmm. His mind is on other things. Maybe he's still looking at PORN mm -hmm. and he's going weeks and weeks when his wife is wanting it. Yeah shame on you bro yeah. and and if it's if people, it's not the pr and stuff but it's just simply i'm just not as into it i just my sex drive's not as strong that might be where you have to practice what this verse is saying and learn how to <laughs> hopefully become more turned on mm -hmm. which can definitely happen mm -hmm. but also you just might have to lay it down and learn how to compromise with with your wife yeah. and if you only want it once every month and she wants it once every other day you may have to compromise and work out like a once a week thing yeah yeah 
this is what I'm saying. They're giving prescriptive advice and telling people, even if you don't want to have sex, offer up your body as a sacrifice on the altar of God and just deal with the trauma later. Fucking no. I also want to be super clear that even if you are a Christian person who believes that sex is a, an important part of marriage, you can very much do this in a way that's still safety promoting and having these conversations about like, we do have a breakdown in sex and intimacy and how can we create an environment where we both feel safe, we both feel valued, we both feel empowered, we both feel sexy, etc., etc. And and Paul and Morgan's advice about like just fucking white knuckle your way through this is so goddamn dangerous and also gross. Selfless love does not require you to sacrifice your sense of safety, your sense of autonomy, your sense of self-love. If, if your partner is telling you that in order for you to fully love them, you need to sacrifice the things that you need to feel safe and valued and empowered and okay, uh, fucking bad sign. Like, this is abusive. These are like textbook things that therapists look for when we talk about whether or not a partner is safe or not. Like, this is, these are the sessions where we have to sit down and have a very hard conversation about, like, listen, love's not supposed to hurt like this. Love's not supposed to feel this way. Relationships with partners who are safe doesn't require us to sacrifice what we need as a human being to feel safe in the world in order for our partner to feel loved. That's such a fucking harmful thing to perpetuate. And also, I want to be clear, I'm not labeling Paul as an abuser because I don't fucking know the guy and I have no good goddamn idea what goes on behind closed doors in their marriage. And so I'm not equipped to be labeling them as any type of thing. However, I want to point out that people who have malicious intentions, people who are abusers, people who are committed to being abusive and unsafe partners will hear this fucking advice and say, awesome, I have a fucking write-off from God. So all of my partners or, or my, my wife or whoever, I can tell them basically to shut the fuck up because I have a fucking write-off now in this Bible verse to be an abusive piece of shit. And so therefore, for it's fine. This is why I take issue with this fucking content because Paul and Morgan say, this is just my opinion. It's just our, our expression. Except that people who are malicious, people who are committed to being harmful will take this and will use this to perpetuate abuse and justify it and gaslight their partners into believing that their very normal and very human reaction to being violated and stripped of their autonomy and their sense of safety is actually sinful. And so therefore you should just shut up and take it. Like this is so fucking harmful. I just, again, I don't have any issue with people who are Christian. It's none of my business, but to hide behind the guise of Christianity as an excuse to espouse advice on the internet that enables abusers to continue abusing people is fucking disgusting. This is just not okay. There's like t five minutes left in this video. I'm good. I'm going to call it. I think we've all suffered enough, honestly. Um, let's just wrap this up. Wow. Um, I very much want to encourage anybody who is um, overwhelmed and <laughs> feeling traumatized right now um, to please take care of yourself. Please remember that consuming content like this, I know the, the common discourse around this is like, oh, well, it's just a video. It's, you know, it's just somebody's opinion, blah, blah, blah. Being triggered and overwhelmed and like activating your nervous system um, is very much a thing that can happen when we consume media. And so please be kind to yourselves. Please take care of yourselves. I'm going to list a playlist up here with like some more bare bones therapy content um, if you need some eye bleach. I just generally want to send so much love. I know that our community is like pretty well populated by folks who are in deconstruction and folks who've survived fundamentalism. And so I want to give you a big, safe, consensual internet hug if you want it. Um, cause this is a lot. And this, I think their advice is continuing to get more and more aggressive and, uh, dangerous for sure. They are like leading with more of an attitude of like reckless disregard. I think this is on purpose, honestly. And so again, I just, I want to give the caveat on this video that I give on all of the other ones. Um, please don't go and hate watch their content. Please don't subscribe to their channel or engage or like interact with their community in any meaningful way because it just further enables them to make content that is so goddamn dangerous. So yeah, that's that. Uh, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We do stuff like this, but we also do a nice educational moment every now and again um, that's not traumatizing. So I'd love to have you stay and uh, share the video to help the channel grow and to help each other grow. And I will see you guys next Saturday. Okay, bye.